Okay, so I'm back and I was able to kind of add a few more details and I'm adding some of the color swatch specifics under each color swatch. So right now I have kind of the hunter green established and I'm gonna kind of show you how you can access and find out the colors of these swatches. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this tan gold color and I'm actually gonna double click my swatch right over here. And it's gonna bring up a color pick picker panel if I can say that correctly. Um, so here's kind of where I've got a lot of these statistics. So you could just open this up and just kind of memorize it and type it in. So I'm just gonna copy, this is your hex number. This is gonna be what you use to build websites when, you, uh, when they ask what colors to use when you're building maybe a WordPress website. Um, this is what they use as the hex color. So that's for the web. So let me go back and click and find RGB. So 224, 200, 148. And just type it in. And I'm just realizing RGB, okay, that's correct. Just making sure that's all correct. Same thing for CMYK, you're going to find these numbers here. So 13, 19, and 46, so I'm just going to type that in, 13, 19, and 36 is great to have, and anything that doesn't have a number, make sure for this bouquet is black, so that doesn't have any black in it. So this is great for print projects, this is great for web or digital projects, and it's great to be able to send this to other designers or people within the company that will be able to, to expand this brand a little bit further out. And gradients, I don't touch. I just leave them as a swatch since they have quite a complicated array. If you double click the gradient tab, um, that's going to be hard to tell them. So you just have it as a live swatch in Illustrator because you'll probably mostly be transferring this to them as a PDF that's editable or as an EPS or an Illustrator file. That's how you'd send it. So they'll be able to access that swatch by getting the eyedropper tool. So that's fine for color palette. I just went ahead and just kind of finesse this a little bit. Um, let me zoom out so you can see. Just having some dividing lines between the elements. And this is going to be our font. So this is headline font and then body copy. So the headline font is Georgia. So I'm just going to copy and paste. And I'm going to type in Georgia. And I'm going to put this in the same font as some of our information here. So headline and then body copy, we haven't established that yet, but I'm just going to do a simple open sans as our body copy. And I'm going to collapse since this body copy, which is going to be all your detailed text that you'll use in advertisements and website um, articles. I'm going to make that smaller and go up to our character panel and I'm just turning all caps off. And I'm making this a little bit smaller and making the sentence longer. So you can actually put a full paragraph to show them how the body copy will look. And this is going to be Open Sans. I'm just going to copy and paste and label this as Open Sans. Perfect. I'm just going to go ahead and highlight all these and I'm going to go to my center align. I'm going to align everything. Just make it nice. Put a little spacing between it. And if you have a, a byline, a subline heading, um, if in a different font, you can also put that any any fonts you want people to be able to use. You're basically telling them um, in terms of the branding projects what fonts they are allowed to use to, to adhere to the branding standards. So this is a branding standards manual. So alternative presentations, uh, we can have this. This is where we can present maybe the single color, and I'm going to go ahead and tell them what this is. They may not be able to see right away. And I'm going to do this as single color. Actually, this is two color, two color. Or let's do solid color. And you could even put in parentheses non-gradient color or whatever to describe that different presentation. And another presentation we can present is black and white here. Because it's always good to be able to see any logo in black and white just in case. I'm going to make these a little bit smaller. These don't need to be big. They just need to be able to know they will have alternative files to use that uh, you you went the extra mile to think about um, different presentations. And that really goes a long way into showing how professional you are. That you're thinking about these other situations that they're going to need this logo for. So this single color, they're going to be able to use this for embroidery or anything that require that they cannot reproduce the gradient color into this geometric shape. And this one will be black and white. I could just highlight it all. I'm gonna go down. 
I'm going to go down to Edit, Edit Colors, and this is just a quick way to convert to grayscale. So I'm going to convert this to grayscale, and that's going to make it a nice black and white image. I could keep it like this, or I could start to tweak the logo here. So if I wanted to make this a solid, so right now it, it did it black and white, but it's still keeping the gradient. So I can actually go back and click on one of these gray swatches over here on my swatch panel. Maybe I like it kind of light to contrast against the dark text. And maybe I have one of these shade, shades to shade lighter like that. Bring this in the front. There we go. So that could be our black and white version. And what's great about this is we can use this when we're starting to build out some of the other marketing materials. It's going to be easy to grab objects from here and use them. So branded assets. So these are going to be things that they, that the designer or yourself or someone else in their marketing team can use to be able to build stuff. So we have these two textures. So I'm going to put, um, I'm going to let them know. You can even name these textures something fancy. So um, I'm just going to just do something simple, but you can uh, do emerald texture or whatever you want to name it. Gold texture. Oops. Perfect. And we have some other assets because we we're building out our business card. And we have this little symbol that they can use that's screened back. So I'm actually going to make this white. Uh, let me see if I can't just grab this solid color. I'm just going to copy and paste this to kind of show them how they can kind of use it on any kind of background. Perfect. I might need to make that a little bit. Let's see, the opacity is only on 8%. Let's make it 12. Make it pop out a little bit more, maybe even more than that, maybe 16. There we go. It's just so they could see kind of the different asset that they can use. And right now, this is the only asset that we have is this extra element. But as you can see on the business card, we were trying out some different little things here. And actually, I used Georgia here. So this is this would be great um, as an alternative font. I'm going to copy and paste this over here. Make it black or dark gray. I like this italics used. So let me do this. Uh, kind of give them another font option. Let's do subheading. And give them another option for this italic font. Make this uh, horizontal. And this is a uh, Georgia italic. I spelled that right. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and delete this and bring that in as kind of a, another option. Headline, body copy is going to be much smaller, and your um, byline is going to be. Oh, this is going to be your um, subheading font. Kind of detailing all that out. Let's make that the same green. Let's go over to our swatch with our eyedropper tool and make it green. So I think we're pretty much done with the details page. Um, what I would do somehow that got shifted. There we go. So we're done with kind of our <clears throat> assets and different presentations and color palette. So this would be the second page you'd present to them along with this kind of main logo page. And you may have more variations. You may need to do a third page where you really go into detail with different versions. You might have a vertical, horizontal, one with a line. Um, it's, it's good to, to have that. So what I would do last is add a third page and I would go ahead and plop in perhaps the business card that's finished and maybe a letterhead or maybe a digital ad to kind of show them how they can use some of these assets. So right now they have this asset, but how do I really use it? It's a great way to show them that, okay, here's, here's a great presentation over here. You would show them the business card and the letterhead to show them how these assets are being used, how maybe you have this little gold bar, how you're using all the font and typography, um, and how you're maybe using the gold textures. And that's it.